So in this video, we are going to be looking at parabolas. Now, these are graphs of quadratics. Now, they do show up sometimes in the real world. If we notice, we have this like roped off section here. Here's a parabola there. It's kind of that U-shaped figure. And then we got this guy over here playing basketball and this being upside down U-shaped there, the, the flight of the basketball. So in this video here, we are going to be starting with a quadratic, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. And from that, we'll be making a table of values. And then from the table of values, we'll go ahead and put that on the, the XY coordinate plane and make a graph. And then we're also going to be looking at some special points or parts of the graph, right? Axis of symmetry, X intercepts, vertex, Y intercept. There's a couple others that are on parabolas that we're not going to get to direct X and the focus, but those aren't covered on, on this video here when we're talking about functions of quadratics or these types of parabolas, okay? So let's look here. There's just a preview of things that go in with graphs of quadratics, right? So here's our f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's our general form for a quadratic function, right? That a, that's going to be the value of the steepness of the parabola, or it's also called vertical stretch. We're going to also be looking at y-intercepts, vertices, or a vertex, and then a preview of what's to come to find x-intercepts. You're either going to factor or you're going to use quadratic form. Those are the two main ways of finding x-intercepts. So for this example, we're going to be graphing this quadratic using a table of values. Now, this is going to make a parabola, which is a, a U-shape. Now, the table of values you can use on quadratics here. If you forget slope-intercept form, you can do it on lines, square root functions, any of them. You can always use a table of values, okay? So for this blank right here, this Y right here, we're going to use 0 for X. So 0 for X, that's your input to find this corresponding Y value here. So basically, we're just going to take the function here and replace the x's with the value for x. In this case, it's a zero. So we're going to have a zero squared minus four times zero. Instead of four times x, it's four times zero and then plus two. Now you just do order of operations, right? Exponents would go first for this one. Zero squared is zero minus four times zero is zero plus two makes two. Okay. So there's, there's our first y value there or the, the y value of two comes from a x value of zero. Now for the next one, right? Now we're going to, instead of zeros, we're going to put ones in for the x's here and here. So here we go, right? So we're going to have a one squared minus four times one. Now these parentheses here, right? If you're thinking PEMDAS, that P for PEMDAS, but the parentheses, that's actually grouping symbols. Like these parentheses here, these are not grouping symbols. So they're either exponents for the E for PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, or it's in this one here, this is a multiplication parentheses. Okay, so it's not grouping symbol parentheses. These are multiplication parentheses, basically, right? So anyhow, so we have one squared, one times one, that's one, minus four times one, that's four, and then plus two, and that's going to make negative one, right? And you can think one, a positive one and a positive two makes three, and then minus four makes negative one there. Um, next one here, right? So now we're going to, instead of ones, now we're going to do twos in for x's. So here we go. So that x turns to a two, that x turns to a two. Now, order of operation, exponents first. So two squared, two times two is four, minus four times two, that's going to be an eight, and then plus two, right? So four and two, that's going to make six, minus eight will make a negative two there. You can go left or right if you want, or you can just do positives, negatives, and then subtract at the end. Uh, next one, now we're going to do a three in for the x. 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 2. 3 squared, that's a 9. Minus 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2. That's going to make negative 1 again. And then for the 4, 4 goes in for x there and there. So we're going to have a 4 squared and then minus 4 times 4. 4 squared, that's 16. Minus 4 times 4, 16. So 16 minus 16 is 0 plus the 2 there or there. And that's going to make a plus 2. So boom, there's our table of values there. Now, if you have a calculator, basically you just like start with this part here and then you put 4s in. Well, you put zeros in to start out with and then delete the zeros, put in a one, delete the ones, put in a two. So you can quickly do this on like the Desmos calculator or something like that if you're looking for a shortcut.
Okay, so now we got our table of values. Now we're ready to plot these points on a grid. So here we go. Zero, two would be the first one. So zero, two would go right there. And then one, negative one, one for the X, negative one for the Y goes right there. Now we have two, negative two. So two on the X, negative two on the Y right there. And now we have a three, negative one, three on the X, down one right there. And then the last one that we're going to put on there is a four, two. So four on the X, two on the Y right there. And now as we do, remember, this is a parabola it's an x squared so that's going to make a u shape or an upside down u this one it'll be a, a, a regular u so there's your shape there okay there's the parabola there now with the parabolas if you notice it it, it goes down and then comes back up it does have a reflective type of feature to it or a mirror image, right? So right down the middle of these parabolas, you can actually fold this half of it on top of this half over here. So that, that part where you would fold your paper to make them match up, that is called an, an axis or a line of symmetry, okay? Uh, next up, this, uh, and, and that's shown here, right in the middle of this one here, but it's not always in the middle of your table of values. What you're looking for on these ones is you're looking for <clears throat> when when your table has kind of a middle number and then these ones mirror image, right? So, so here's our middle number here, negative two, and then you have a negative one, two going up and then a negative one, two going down. So that's the middle, that's your axis or your uh, line of symmetry and it's where x equals two now also on this this very bottom here where it goes from because right here it's going down from left to right going down and now it starts going up right here so that's going to be your vertex where it switches from going down to going up or from going up and then going down that's called a vertex okay or a turning point okay and that coordinate point that's that's that same x here that we looked at for our axis of symmetry same same x x is two and then the corresponding y value is a negative two so your ordered pair coordinate for the vertex for this one is going to be two negative two a couple other things that we can see right y-intercept, that's always going to be where x is zero, okay? Whether you're on a, a line, a square root, in this case a parabola, when x is zero, that's going to be your y-intercept, right? Because here x is negative five, here x is negative one, here x is positive one, in between negative one, positive one, x is zero on the y-axis, okay? So that's how we can get our y-intercept, it's where x is zero. So zero, two would be the coordinate or ordered pair for the y-intercept. So now let's just look at parts of a parabola. So here we go. Remember, these are graphs of quadratics. So this parabola here, does it open up or does it open down? Now this one's in the shape of a U and it opens up. So this is an opening up one. Now, does it have a maximum or a minimum? So in this case here, you got to look, okay? So if you look on the left and on the right, it keeps going up and up and up and up, up and up and up and up and up. But if you go down, do, 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 do. oh, look, it stops here. Like this is the very bottom of the graph. It has a bottom but no top it keeps on going up and up and up forever and ever but it does have a bottom or a minimum okay so this graph opens up and it has a minimum opens up with a minimum now line of symmetry remember that's where you can you can take it and you can fold it right in half okay and you can fold it right in half right here so there's your axis or line of symmetry it's right there now with these ones a lot of times the teachers will ask for it as an equation so just start it with x equals right it goes right through x equals negative three right 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 there so so basically that's all you write down x equals negative three there's your line of of symmetry written as an equation the vertex that's a very top or in this case very bottom of the graph it's where it turns right over here it's going down and then it turns and starts going up here on, on the right side right and we always read these from, from left to right so this is the very bottom of it it's where it stops going down and starts going up and so the vertex is just asking for that coordinate now remember it is a coordinate so parentheses two numbers and a comma in between right so in this case here right the, the x is a negative three and the y is a negative four so vertex looks like that don't forget parentheses right y intercept okay so y intercept that's where the graph touches the y axis crosses the y axis intersects the y-axis, right? It's going to be right there um, where uh, the y is five, right? So, and again, some teachers, they'll, they'll want it as a 
ordered pair or a coordinate. So all of your y intercepts are always zero comma in parentheses. And then the value in this case, it's a five there. Okay. So for x intercepts for this one here, we're just going to list them. Okay. Make it easy. So x intercepts, right? That's right along the x axis going from left to right. The graph touches, crosses, intersects the x axis right there. And then it goes down and then comes back up and it intersects there. So it intersects twice. Okay. So we'll have two numbers that we put in here, right? So the x intercepts, it's got this one here at negative five. So negative five is one comma, and then the other one there at a negative one. And there's your two x intercepts there. So another example of a parabola. So this one here, does it open up or up, open down? So this one, you know, it's going like this. So it's, it's actually opening down for this one here. So it opens down. Now this one is going to have a maximum. It has a top to it right here, but if you look to the right or to the left, it keeps going down and down and down and down and doesn't stop. It doesn't have a bottom or a minimum, but it does have a tip top right there. It goes up and then turns and then goes down. So it has a top or a maximum. So this one here opens down and it has a maximum. Line of symmetry, that's right down the middle of it where you can fold the page in half and you have both halves line up perfectly. And that's where X equals one. And a lot of teachers, they do like it as a equation. So X equals, right? Uh, vertex, remember that's the ordered pair where it goes from going up to going down. Uh, going up and now going down, right? Or the very tip top, the, the maximum for this one here is going to be the vertex, right? So don't forget parentheses and then the X is a one and the Y is a four. So one comma four in parentheses. Y intercept, right? Where the graph touches, crosses, intersects the Y axis is going to be right there. There's our Y axis. It's going to cross right there as an ordered pair parentheses, zero comma three is the value for the y intercept and then last up let's look at x intercepts right so going along the x axis here we go there's one here and then it goes up and comes back down and crosses the x axis there at a three so we have two x intercepts one here at the negative one and then the other one here at the three so here we go. We're going to have, uh, we, we have the graph of y equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 8. And we're going to use the graph to solve the equation y equals 3. Now this one here, it's a lot of words and it's kind of weird, but the concept is really not that tricky. It's just trying to identify what is this actually asking me, okay? So another way of wording the exact same question, although it doesn't make it super easy to understand, is 3 equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay, so we're looking for when the red part equals three. Okay, so let, let's see, let's just test out some numbers. So let's say the X is uh, a negative two. Let's say the X is a negative two. Now, what is the Y gonna be? Well, the Y is gonna be a 12, okay? What about when X is negative three? What's the Y gonna be, right? Or what's the output gonna be? Well, there it's gonna be 11, okay? Now, what about negative four? Okay, negative four uh, makes an eight for a Y, okay? Now, what is this one asking? This one's asking for when y equals three, y equals three. Well, let's look on the graph. Here's where y equals three right here, okay? So now we're looking, oh, right there, which x gives us a y of three? Well, right there, or it's got one on this side as well, okay? So in this case here, you're either gonna have the negative five, right, for, for this point here when y is three, or you're gonna have a positive one right there for when y equals three on the right-hand side of the, of the vertex or the line of symmetry. So this is gonna have two answers. And again, what this is asking is, it's asking for the x's, it's asking for the numbers here for when y is three. So it's along this line here, okay? Well, the graph crosses there and there. So the x's where that happened is right there at negative five and positive one. Couple of bonus questions, here we go. So what about when y equals 12? Well, that's all the way up here, right? Right? And then the graph is just right there when X would be negative two would be the answer to this one. Okay. Now another bonus question. Here we go. Right. What about when Y is 13? Well, that's up here. Oh, check it out. The graph doesn't even go up to 13. Okay. So in this case here, this would be no solution, right? And a couple of different ways of writing no solution. You can write uh, obviously no solution. Uh, these two here basically stand for the empty set, uh, whether it's a circle with a line through it or a uh, pair of braces there with nothing in it. And then DNE stands for does not exist. So a couple of different ways of saying no solution. 
So let's just go ahead and review these concepts we've covered in this video. First up, if you have a parabola that looks like this, looks like a U, that's going to open up and it's going to have a minimum. See, it has a bottom to it right there. Okay. Uh, next up, if it opens down, right? So it looks like an upside down U, right? U upside down you, right? Upside down you, that's going to open down and it's going to have a tip top to it or a maximum, right? On our parabolas, we have a vertex, right? And that's going to be the, the minimum or the maximum written as an ordered pair there, X, Y pair. Um, our Y intercepts where it crosses the Y axis. Remember, if it's written as a, as a an ordered pair or a coordinate, it's zero comma, and then the value, this one would be a negative three. And then we also talked about line of symmetry, and that's right down the middle. It goes through the vertex. So if you found the vertex, you know where the line of symmetry is. It's just the X value of the vertex is your line of symmetry. So when you write it as an equation, you write X equals, okay? So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you didn't like it, please hit the dislike button twice just to be sure.